Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5. It might look calm through the lens of our sky cam, but storms are firing in parts of the region, and that could impact our evening plans. Let's go right to Hutch for more details in no wait weather. Hutch? Andrea, we have isolated thunderstorm activity, some in northwest Minnesota and some more in south central North Dakota. We captured a time lapse of this cluster of cells that formed not far from you in the Crookston area has since made its way down into the Monoman County area. Notice those storms not towering too high. They have been capable of upwards of nickel diameter hail. Here's what they look like on the radar. Those storms approaching Ada and heading right into the uh, Monoman area shortly, but the strength of them has diminished a little bit. Still heavy rain and lightning with them. Also, we have storms down near the Edgeley area right now. So Monoman, heavy rain, small hail potential. Uh, Ada, just off to your east, some storms. And here is another towering storm near Lamore, and you'll be seeing the brunt of this storm. It's a slow mover, 10 miles per hour to the southeast, capable of half inch to one inch diameter hail. We do have a severe thunderstorm watch for our western counties in the James River Valley. Hail over two inches in diameter possible and damaging wind. Those are the main threats as we go through the night. It's later tonight when some of these storms will extend to the north and east into the Red River Valley. We'll leave you with a shot from our Dakota Magic Casino cam. This one capturing the storm that's m near the Edgeley area right now. Much more towering is that storm. So, spotty thunderstorms this evening and then more widespread thunderstorms that could be strong to severe as we head into the nighttime hours. Andrea? All right, thanks, Hutch. Make sure you have the Valley News Live Storm Team weather app so that you can keep up with the weather anytime, anywhere. You'll get the latest forecasts and conditions so that you can plan your day. All you have to do is search VNL Weather in the App Store and download it for free. A 34-year-old man is in jail after a search warrant led to a drug bust in Moorhead. Officials say 34-year-old Dennis Orlando Akins was arrested today after police served a narcotics search warrant at 1220 14th Street North. Police seized 12 grams of powder heroin with an estimated street value of $2,400. Six children were also found inside the home. Akins is currently being held at the Clay County Jail on controlled substance and child endangerment charges. The children were left in the care of their mother, who was present at the time of the warrant. A 36-year-old man has been arrested in connection with a hit-and-run last week that left 27-year-old Michael Tibbetts dead. Officials say Aaron Lee Pelham of Wabin has been identified as the driver in this incident. Pelham was arrested late yesterday and is being held in the Becker County Jail. The accident happened on June 21st on County Road 158, about one and a half miles north of County Highway 34 in Maple Grove Township. Authorities originally said Tibbetts was riding on an all-terrain vehicle when the accident happened and that Pelham fled the scene of the crash. Tibbetts later died at a Fargo hospital. A corrections officer at the state penitentiary in Bismarck was assaulted this morning. Authorities there were not able to tell us how the incident happened or whether the officer was taken to a hospital, saying they are still investigating. A licensed social worker out of Grand Forks is facing three charges of sexual exploitation after court records say he had consensual sex with a patient. The document alleges it started in early April when the victim says she and David Bialik had sexual contact in an empty office room during a scheduled appointment. After that, court records say the two met on several other occasions to engage in sexual, consensual sexual activity. Court documents go on to state Bialik asked the victim to lie about their relationship and say it was, quote, an emotional affair. Bialik now faces three felony charges of sexual exploitation by a therapist. One person was arrested this afternoon after witnesses say he was involved in a fight in Grand Forks. It happened just after four when a witness says a man broke through uh, another man's windshield and started strangling him. I saw a man with a chunk of wood hit and break a window in a car and then he jumped into the car and started choking the man behind the driver's seat and he just kept choking him, choking him, choking him. Um, they were running around screaming and the, everybody, all the um, people involved. There's no word yet on the condition of the man injured during that fight. Fargo police issued quite a few citations during recent crackdowns on impaired driving. 
The department used a DOT grant to conduct the extra enforcement in April and June. They were out four different times looking for violations. They issued 76 citations and or arrests and 60 traffic warnings. A House committee has filed a lawsuit seeking President Trump's tax returns. The House Ways and Means Committee filed the suit in federal court today. It names the Treasury Department, Treasury Secretary, the IRS, and the IRS Commissioner. The lawsuit alleges the Trump administration defied a subpoena to shield President Trump's tax return information from congressional scrutiny. A nine-year-old Philadelphia girl is still in critical condition after police say an illegal firework exploded in her hands inside her home Sunday morning. Officials believe the girl found an M80 firecracker and lit it inside her mother's home. This prompted Valley News Team's crime and safety reporter Bailey Hurley to talk to experts about what you can do this firework season to make sure your kids are still having fun but also staying safe. Actual M80 firecrackers have been illegal for quite a while now, but that doesn't mean you can't still come across them. Officials say some people might still have M80s or other fireworks laying around from years ago. And if that's the case, they say it's best not to light them. The chance of somebody getting very, very hurt or killed uh, go up drastically. And actually, Linen says it might be best not to even touch them, saying instead to call law enforcement just to be safe. You don't know what the chemical makeup is. There are certain chemicals that when they mix, they can spontaneously combust. Um, that's not out of the realm of possibility. But Dave Ruder at Memory Fireworks says they try to take the stress and worry of your kid's safety out of sight. So we have all kinds of things that we feel are kids' safety. Uh, so they can be involved in the show with the adults, but be part of everything. Bruder says they don't even carry products similar to M80s, not even for adults, just to further ensure no one gets hurt. It's like our Dakota Dynamite. It's got a pop to it, but it's not going to be something that's going to, you know, injure somebody like that. From light-up bracelets to three-foot-long sparklers, Reuter says they have everything needed to make sure both kids and adults stay injury-free this 4th of July. We always encourage safety first. We want people to have fun, but we want everyone to be safe. Now, Andrea, a few other things experts say that you can do to keep your kids safe, especially if they're at that age where they're starting to light off their own fireworks, is put on some safety glasses and as well as put on some long sleeves. That'll keep both their eyes as well as their wrists and the skin by their hands safe. Now, experts do say no matter where you get your fireworks at this summer, all of them have been tested, but that doesn't mean that there won't be any duds. So experts do remind you to be patient, especially when you're waiting for those fireworks to light off. They also say to keep a bucket of water nearby, as well as stay back at least 100 feet from where any of those fireworks are lighting off. Reporting live from Black Powder Fireworks in Horace, Bailey Hurley, Valley News Live. All right, thanks, Bailey. Our recent weather has been prime for mosquito breeding, and now the city is fighting back. Cass County Vector Control sprayed rural cities and subdivisions last night and is planning aerial spraying of Fargo, West Fargo, and Moorhead tonight. It's scheduled to start at 815. The cities of Grand Forks and East Grand Forks are also planning community-wide spraying beginning at 8 p.m. You can help cut your risk of getting bitten by using insect repellent that contains DEET, by limiting your outdoor activities between dusk and dawn when mosquitoes are most active, and eliminating standing water around your home. And when you're outside, health officials say wear long pants and long sleeve shirts to help protect you. Famed NFL quarterback Peyton Manning is coming to Fargo to share his story for the Chamber's Voices of Vision event. It will take place Tuesday, November 5th from noon to 1.30 p.m. at Sanford Health Athletic Complex. This marks the 10th year for the event. Previous speakers have included Shaquille O'Neal and Rudy Giuliani. More on